Hey everyone, welcome back to my Lego City Room. I'm going to be doing something I've never done before. I'm going to go through and review my entire city, at least all the stuff that's on top of the tables, casually and critically. So this is not gonna be a city tour by any means. It's gonna be me going around and telling you how I really feel today about the stuff that is here, and in some cases, the stuff that is, that is not here. So let me get right into it. First of all, over here on the left, the Cargo Harbor area is obviously the most complete section of the entire city. And so it's easy for anybody to like this the most out of all the areas because again it's it's the only one that, that's actually here everything else is is piecemeal you know work in progress and, and everything and i'm generally quite happy with how this how this turned out you know this this was finished in its pretty much its current form quite some time ago but i've as i as i walk past this space i don't find myself feeling regrets if i had more space I would love to use more space, especially for this stuff over here, for the, the container loading, offloading section to have more of the, the train cars, more of the, the storage area, maybe have some, uh, uh, some ground-based loaders work, you know, working around in a larger yard over there. But overall, like the, uh, the loading crane, I like that. The ships that are here, I mostly like. like this, based on a singular hull, is is good the biggest one that lego ever made this completely custom works for me this based on a big but not too big hull works for me as a as a bulk hauler this one does not though not happy with that i've never fully been happy with it like i i, I like the process that i went through made made sense i made decisions that i thought were good for it but it ended up just having this superstructure that's too too thin and too tall. You're going to hear a, a helicopter in the background, but I'm just going to keep, I'm going to keep, uh, uh, keep recording for now because I want to, I want to get straight through this and, and keep it casual. This thing I'm still super happy with. The trucks I'm happy with. The forklifts I'm very happy with. The, uh, the warehouse itself is kind of, it's kind of plain, especially on the inside. I think if, if I had a little bit of detail on the inside and then some lights there, it would make it better. Oh, the cargo, the random cargo that's just sitting around on on deck as uh, I'm definitely very happy with that stuff and some of the some of the uses of, of spare parts that I had so overall over here this brings me joy I'll quickly 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 just take a look under here I was gonna focus on I am gonna focus on the stuff that's that's above uh, for this video but under here this is fine but it has a bunch of, of actual sets and stuff and you know ultimately that'll not be the case anymore. Terrain, this lacolith feature here, don't call it a mountain. You can call it a mountain if you want, <laughs> I don't care. But uh, how it looks, well, okay, how it's shaped and how it's built, those are both good. I'm happy with that. Definitely could use some more detail on, on the outside. Like I, like I like this corner over here the best with a little bit more foliage down in there. I understand, again, the, the thoughts behind it and everything but yeah I would like to see just a little bit more on that but overall its shape and its position I think it's I think it's pretty good the zoo is a work in progress can't talk about that much because again it's a work in progress uh, you know it's a relatively recent work in progress I'm pretty happy with the decisions that I've made along the way um, from a high level when you don't have yet the guardrails in there and you don't have people all about all about this space it's easy to look at it and say well it's just it's just not enough room for animals and there's way too much room for people to walk around but once people are actually in there and the, the rails are up everything will start to tighten up quite a bit and i think generally i've made good decisions with what's with what's here the fire station it's still here and i still have not felt the need to redo it i'm actually happy with that as it is i'll I'll eventually change up this little structure up here, but otherwise it's good. It might have to move around again. It's moving around a bunch, but as it is, no, I'm happy with that. Happy enough with that. This station, I put a lot of thought into it, and it definitely takes a lot of inspiration from various things that I've seen uh, throughout my life, and happy with how that turned out. I feel like it makes a good use of the space. It's visible from, from both sides. It makes sense from the perspective of the minifigures. It has a nice long platform as well that can accommodate relatively long trains. Since I made the most recent layout change, 
Uh, there's also the, the separate line there, so I can have a long distance passenger train stop here and uh, you know still have operations going on the on the main line simultaneously. And one of them, one of those lines ends up being an honorary yard lead for what's out down there. Shell station. This is a work in progress again because originally the way that this was set up, you got the you know the main station here, you got the convenience store back there, and then an attached garage, which takes inspiration from uh, honestly takes mostly takes inspiration from a, a car repair, a couple of car repair spots that were within walking distance of where I grew up back in the in the seventies and eighties. And all that works for me, but there used to be, well, originally there was the car wash over here. I think that was the first uh, location of it. I might have changed it once already uh, previously, but the car wash, most recent thinking is that the car wash will move over to here. It'll kind of change the flow of things. And I'll take one of the bays off of the, the, uh, the service garage thing here so that it'll fit into a more reasonable space. But all in all, like the colors, the references to all the the classic Lego, uh, you know, shell specific stuff and also gas station stuff in general, all that is is good for me. Uh, just needs to have some some more people and cars around it and get it to work in this specific space. In general, this area down here is very much in flux, and I'm not super happy with it. Now the Octan factory, it's fine. It's a little bit plain on the outside. Could probably use just a little bit of a little bit of additional color, a little bit of additional contrast up in this upper level. Otherwise, it's all right for what it's supposed to represent. I really like the smokestack there. Um, you know, it's 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 a recognizable shape. It makes sense from a story perspective with what I've done with Octan being a uh, a mug, <laughs> a Lego universe-wide leader in making coffee mugs, but. Yeah, it could it could use just a little bit more detail, but overall, I'm happy with the general presentation here and the size and the shape of it. Yeah, all that all that works out for me. This little machine shop here, I'm not going to open up the top of it right now, but I did recently open that up to remind myself of what's inside of it. That's actually really good. That definitely does exactly what it's supposed to inside and out. So no complaints from me about that. Train yards just did a video. Uh, covering uh, some changes to the train yards, putting the passenger one over there, bringing the freight yard over here. There's more work to do on that, but this is a much better layout for me, given that when I walk into the room, I'm walking from, from over here. So it's much better for me to be closer to the stuff that I personally like more. And I kind of actually like seeing the, the, the increased color back in that corner. It kind of brightens up that corner. That shed right here, the engine maintenance shed, I don't want to change a single thing with that. Well, okay, maybe maybe put a little bit of detail on the top. A little bit of weathering, a little bit of, I don't know, just something. Otherwise, though, like the colors, the angle, uh, the details that are, that are on the inside, the amount of space that it takes up, the, the amount of rolling stock that it can accommodate inside of it, that is, that is working for me. It's totally working for me. Another thing that's working for me is the concept of the lights. I don't have my lights turned on. I apologize for that, all the in-city lighting and stuff. But, uh, you know, these, these littler details, I, I need to do more things like that. Lights and, and signals and, you know, other traffic maintenance and sensing equipment and stuff. Definitely need to do more of that. This over here, this terrain feature, it's cool. I'm gonna, actually going to walk us around to the other side. So this is one of my more recent projects. And it tends to reflect more of my more recent sensibilities and you know, stuff that I've learned over time about not just working with the with the brick, but also what I want and how to to world build and to to sculpt in my mind, uh, you know, larger larger things. And yeah, I'm rather happy with how this has turned out, and especially how it integrates in the ability to in an emergency rescue anything that derails on the inside because you've got multiple train tunnels that go through here. Got uh, three entrance slash exits to it and being able to have access in there. Uh, if anything goes wrong, I think is important. Definitely added some, some challenges to the design, but it's all good. Uh, I think 
I think it was executed well enough, except for just this edge, which needs to get dithered in with some foliage. Just a little bit of stuff is just going to come over the edge, so you don't see that that sharpness there. A lot of folks are concerned about the fact that the mall is right up against it. I'm not. No, this is this is fine, and it also ties into a couple of things uh, that I've personally experienced in my life, where there was there were shopping areas with cliffs behind them. So yeah, this this 100% works for me with the juxtaposition of the terrain there. The mall is still, I mean, the interior of it is still really good. I I, it, I hate to say that because I, 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 I don't like to give myself credit or props or any kind of you know positive encouragement or anything. It just feels it feels icky to me. Um, but being being as honest as I can, uh, imagining this wasn't made by me, I would be happy with it, especially on the interior. Now the exterior, uh, coming back to coming back to the real world and talking from my own perspective and what I what I know and my own growth and what I know is I'm capable of and what you can do with the brick and everything. The outside of this needs help. It's 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 too plain. I understand the decisions that went into it. Not mad at any of them. Definitely didn't have the parts to do better. But I also didn't have the skill to do better when I when I did this. So yeah, interior, good. Exterior, mm, could use a reskinning. Ironically, this little thing that happens to be sitting here right now as a suggestion of things to, to come in this, this plaza that's being set up. This is good as it, as is, outside and in. It, sorry, I'm not looking at that quite right. It works. A little grocery store. Good detail on the inside. Good texture on the outside. Story works for it. Yeah. More stuff like that. Also, it's kind of compact, which is which is really good. Not wasting a lot of space. Similarly, uh, this building over here is not bad. I just wish that you could see more of what's inside of there. Like the, the laser tag arena is cool, but... You never see it. And that's one of the problems with most Lego buildings. If you put a bunch of detail inside of them, you capture that detail in one video. And then once you close everything up, it's done. It's gone. It's essentially forgotten about. The moves that I've made most recently to turn this into more of a plaza, more of a, an outdoor mall, full mall, rather than just having the, the single building there, uh, that's really good. There are going to be additional structures here, lots of walkable space. And yeah, that's that's a big, big, big plus. Taking out a bunch of road plates and uh, capturing it back for use by the minifigures. Yeah, off street parking as well, just for a, a little bit of a, a little bit more feeling of of a lot of people coming to this des destination. Yeah, happy with that. This thing recently did a tour through the interior of it again with uh, Beyond the Brick. Check them out, Beyond the Brick. Just search that term up and uh, should be the first channel result. But of course, I've, you know, I've covered this extensively in the past myself. The Enterprise Medical Center, the hospital, it's fine. Would like to have a little bit more color rather than just the white um, for the, the major accent. But all in all, yeah, I'm good with it. It's definitely completely jam-packed with detail, isn't it? The Bauhaus building. What is this doing over here? It used to be over there. Yeah, it used to be over there, and now it's here. Looks fine on the outside. There's no detail on the inside. Eventually, I'll figure out some specific use for it, but for now, it's fine. It's fine. Maybe add a little, little bit more detail up, up here. One thing that I, the, the one thing I don't like about having it in this spot is that the dark tan roof here matches this dark tan roof over here. It's a little bit too much of a coincidence. Thankfully, there's not a whole lot of it visible here, but hopefully that won't bother me too much in the future. This building, one of the best executed buildings that I have. It has a nice variety of exterior texture, fine texture, good color, um, Good contrast, good medium texture with the, the columnar uh, sections of it, the, vert, the vertical sections, the, uh, the slopes on there and everything, the roof, the sides of the roof, the interior detail, everything about that just really works out. I, I can't be mad at this at all. It's one of the things that, as I've moved it around a bunch, as I've moved a bunch of things, uh, just in general, I've... I've maintained 
complete satisfaction with this. Now the, the Duplo thing on top, maybe not. Roof detail, maybe not entirely, but those are, those are super minor things. Almost all of this I'm happy with. Police station, one of my most recent full builds, right? Or rebuilds, it's essentially built from scratch, just uses some pieces from the original. Interior detail is good, solid. Exterior, a little bit plain. I'm probably gonna end up changing out the color of the, the tan thing. Experiment with that a little bit, just a little design element there. Uh, I really liked how this started. I actually I actually do like it from the front, but as soon as you see it from the side, it mm, starts to fall apart. So I knew that was happening as I built it, but I, I was hoping that you wouldn't see it from the side as much once it was in place, but you know, definitely, definitely misjudge that. I guess this side isn't that bad, but there will, there will be something else in this space, you know, something next to it. So some of that will get, some of that will get blocked, but over here, it's a little, it's a little weak. And I did try to change that up. I worked on that while I was doing the live build, but didn't go far enough. All right, let's, let's move forward. Let's move right on down into the, the core of the downtown area. This is kind of inspired by the old sharper image building in downtown San Francisco. Yes, this is good. Happy with it. The idea of turning this into a plaza with a little bit of greenery and some, some walkable space. Good. New building over there with the deli, the bar, and the rooftop entertainment. Decent. Not entirely happy with the detailing, especially of the second level. I never was the whole the whole time. Uh, the, the second level windows. Yeah, it's just weird texture there. Feels incomplete. Feels amateurish. First floor is fine. Again, interiors is good. The sign worked out well. The stairway on the other side is really good. Mm, but yeah, this is something that I could revisit at some time. At some point, just for some, some touch-ups. But the stuff around it, I think, is fine. Skyscraper. Mm -hmm. I really like doing this. I really do. All right, you got that big rectangle. It gets thin, and then it gets wide. Yeah, I like those, that, that, that trippiness of it. You can really feel when you're, when you're here. I don't like the fact that I can see through the windows. I'm fine with it not having full detail. Someday, maybe it'll have full detail 20 years from now. But you know, it's one of those things where, again, nobody's going to see it unless I finally start adding lights to some areas, in which case I'll need to add just a little bit of additional detail. But that's, that's all to, to come. I'm going to bring things all the way down here. Obviously, there's a big space here that sucks. I've been working a lot in recent months on digital design for the next skyscrapers that are going to go into this space. I have one completely designed. I have another one almost completely designed, and then I'm working on a third one, and there will also be a fourth. They will be different sizes and different shapes to help complete the long-term goal for this, the, the idea that's been with me the entire time for how to build out the, the highly dense downtown area of my city. This idea that started all the way back in old Jang City. This here, this is fine. This little little elevated rail station. Yep. It was it was a bold move to go with the McDonald's colors like that. They're inspired though by the classic airport shuttle, as is this entire elevated rail line. And the downstairs section of it is good. Upstairs section, it's not perfect. Could probably use I don't know, at some point, some slight adjustment, but overall, yeah, I, it, it looks a lot better when I get down closer to it. When I look at it from my perspective, from up here, six feet up, I'm looking at too much of this awning, honestly, <laughs> but it's, it's not intended to be looked at from that perspective, but I didn't really think of that, right? I was thinking more from the minifigs perspective, not so much from the huge figure perspective. If I ever get to the point of finally elevating all these tables like I want to, then I'll be fixing some of that. Really quickly, the elevated rail, uh, the train itself, still proud of the technical uh, accomplishment here, which was, which was significant. See, it's, it took a lot of work and it's still to this day, so many years later, one of the only truly four wide, fully four wide power functions, uh, uh, 
uh, narrow gauge, you know, four, just four stud wide overall uh, working trains that I've ever seen, uh, period. So, and, and it works. Uh, it does unfortunately have to use one non Lego piece in the form of a, a weight inside of the, the car that has the, the, the locomotion, that has the motor in it and has the, the traction. But otherwise, like the end cars, the center car, those are good. The overall approach here to solving the problems worked out for me. Uh, it, it does still run to this day just fine. And yeah, I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. It was, it was quite an undertaking. This thing over here has good detail in it. Again, sorry, I don't have the lights on. Good detail inside of it. Uh, I was really pushing myself to try to go a little bit avant-garde, uh, a little bit, a little bit weird with some of the design, making sure I didn't let it be boring. But after the fact, I think maybe that stripe right there, that big diagonal stripe in medium nougat is not so great. Uh, the pool is fine. The water needs to be better, but the, the idea of the pool and having the, the green glass edge and everything, that's, that's nice. The front of this, the main visible section of it, mm, again, didn't have a major plan for this when I started. I just tried to make sure that I didn't stick to one color or two colors. Wanted to make it not boring. I think I went just too random with it. It's kind of a mess, especially the Ground floor, I've never been super happy with. I, I know what I was going for with each decision that I made, but the end result, all of it coming together, feels like the result of the exact process that I used, which was winging it. From a technical perspective, it's, it's funky. It's a lot weirder, a lot more difficult to make the shapes work and everything than it, than it looks like. It's, uh, there's, there's less symmetry here than it appears, and. Yeah, there's some really weird stuff going on with it, but I'm fine with it. Oh, I wish it was bigger, definitely. You know, um, more, more floors would be good, but <laughs> kind of impossible. I'd have to start from scratch, honestly. The, uh, the beach area has always looked nice. You know, it's nice to have some, some water. Uh, beaches generally look nice. I should change the angle of the incoming waves so they're not perfectly parallel to the shoreline itself. Could use a little bit more life here now. Um, things changed recently, relatively recently, when I moved the the uh, the fence from here to the other side, opened things up a little bit, but also feels maybe a little bit too open, so now, now it needs more detail down here. But generally, this is, this is a good thing to have. And then the fact that this is lower, got the elevated, relatively elevated section of the street over here, that's working out well. This whole marina section is working out just fine. This is a little bit old, a little bit dated, the Harbor Master's office for this little space, but it works, it definitely works. I spent a lot of time hanging around places like this in, in real life throughout my childhood, and this captures it, captures it pretty well. It needs more space, needs more room, but from, from the shore through the custom boats, this is good. I would like, I would love to have more of it, but even though I've cut it down a lot in, you know, with some of the recent, relatively recent layout changes, especially when I removed an entire table from here, nah, it's, it's turned out okay. This area down here, basically have the same feelings about it that I do the other underwater area. Uh, just, it's not custom, you know, finally brought in some custom, some really custom coral clumps and everything, but otherwise it's fine. It's nice. Brings a lot of people joy. This one has the TV in the back. It's not on right now, but uh, it's not good enough for me personally. All right. Last thing that needs to be covered awkwardly over here in this corner, this poor thing, Planetary Defense Force Base. Yeah, th honestly, there's, there's not a whole lot to say about this as a project, as a whole area of the city, because there's, there's essentially nothing that's been done here. There's a, there's a spot for it. Uh, it's the right spot. Uh, it's, it's prepared properly, but mostly you just got these little, little builds sat on temporarily on top of some old base plates. The builds I'm happy with and the figures I'm happy with. Uh, you know, some of these are relatively new. Some of these are relatively old. Anything that I particularly disliked from the earliest days, uh, I've replaced or gotten rid of. So what remains here 
is, is as far as stuff that I've built is stuff that I actually like. And of course, it's more of it downstairs. Yeah, a few more builds down here. Oh, I forgot I got that one up there. Uh, but you know, all, all of that's going to be connected and it's, it's all part of the part of the, the same thing. Uh, aquarium in between not covering the aquarium in this video because again, I forgot to turn on the internal lights and everything, but I love the aquarium period paragraph end of story <laughs> that's in between these. But yeah, this this space is is good in my mind or it's going to be good in my mind what is here so far is is fine there's no stress i don't feel like uh this uh, i need to work on this someday no i want to work on this i want to get it all nice and filled up and you know to to fulfill my ultimate plans with this did you know that this was the first thing that i ever planned for a, a lego diorama before i even started doing the city thing back in the bionicle early early bionicle days i was going to do a classic space light gray themed little base thing yeah so that dream is still alive i'm going to end the tour right there for now i'll probably do a separate video just covering the rest of the the under table stuff which is relatively mixed up and in <laughs> worse states of of repair or you know lack of completion overall i feel so much better about this room this layout now than i did maybe i don't know two years ago or so uh, all the more recent changes that i've made the bigger things that have ch that have changed was it two years it was more than that it's more than that maybe five go back five years or so this is the moving of the the main road closer to the edge of the table so we as we huge figures including myself get closer to the to the street you know the, the street is just closer physically and taking out the row of buildings that were here that were just using up space to be more efficient but they were blocking the view of stuff and making it difficult to see i had to go all the way over here when the road was here and it's just there's it a whole side of the sidewalk here that was blocked and now none of that <laughs> none of that bad stuff is there this doesn't make as efficient use of the space at all had to cut a lot out of my plan but it's much better it's it's a much better experience to to be here to look at the stuff train comes out to the edge changing this removing this table is absolutely transformative being able to walk straight through here changes everything so much uh, flipping this around the train station so you can see the entire long platform same as you can see the other platform at the other major station that's good solid um, having the distinct runs of, of loops rather than basically just having one main train loop inside of another having one loop that's over here another loop that's all the way over here doing its own thing and then having the ability to connect the the two at any time that i want so the trains can have a longer longer distance to go all that works this area back here not so good right this there's i don't know exactly what to what to do with this i'm i'm willing to change anything over here but as it is i could probably put some kind of structure in this space but i don't know i don't know what could i do something that's a little bit long a little bit deep relative to the uh, relative to the, the the main crossroad here, maybe, but I don't know. This this is a big question, big question mark space. Much more so than this back here, because this is going to be just more 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 natural, less developed. Same thing over here. Originally, I was going to put in a a yard for a construction company. Doesn't look like that's going to happen anymore. You just don't have the the space for it. But again, like I mentioned earlier, this is still a big question mark and the question mark could actually extend even farther than that in terms of the overall the overall feel but that good this moving in a good direction just generally i'm moving in a good direction but there's still some major question marks about that that whole side over there some of it honestly doesn't make sense to me right now let me actually let me actually cover one last thing that's a big question mark, a specific question mark for me, for me. It's not a question to, to viewers. It's just something that I have to deal with and have struggled with mentally. This idea of this nice harbor area over here, which I'm, I'm happy with, having its sole road access coming past the zoo. Like, you can just imagine there'd be big trucks going past here all the time. 
And even if even if the animals, you know, even if there's enough soundproofing that the animals aren't going to be disturbed by it, just the the people who visit here probably aren't going to feel so safe with giant trucks coming by all, all the time. That doesn't make so much sense to me. That's not that has never been working for me m mentally and, and theoretically in, in any way. So that's that's something that continues to to bother me. And I will definitely continue to have to to consider um, in conjunction with some other major changes that I've made recently and other changes that I am open to making. There's a possibility of some something major changing with how this connects ultimately with that over there industry and train yards. But I don't have any specifics to talk about it at this time because I've not figured it out for myself. But that's it for my general thoughts right now about what's in this city and what's going on with this city. Uh, obviously didn't cover the individual vehicles and things and the individual trains and the pieces of rolling stock covered the ships just a little bit but I'll probably come back and do a, a separate video looking at the, the the finer things the little things but thank you for watching for now i'll talk to you again soon